Should you do video for your podcast? We'll answer that here on Podcasting and Platforms with Chris Spangle. I'm your host, Chris Spangle, and I've got five pros and three cons to doing video with your podcast. So let's start with the pros. The first is that social media will be your main marketing channel. And those social media channels have prioritized video. Facebook and Instagram recently made a switch to compete better with TikTok. TikTok is now the number one social media platform. They started out pacing Facebook over the last year. So to compete, they are now prioritizing Reels. That's why you see Reels everywhere. It also solves another problem, which is they don't want you seeing your uncle's Facebook updates about politics. <laughs> so they're deprioritizing your friends and family and putting creators above everybody else in all of these algorithms. So that has huge implications for content creators. So if you do video, then you will have video like this that you can edit into TikToks. Number two, it expands the reach of your podcast through search. The second largest search engine in the world is YouTube. Think about it. How did you get here, right? How to start a podcast? Should I do video? You start asking YouTube questions. That's how you change the tire in your car or bake a better recipe. And so if you have a niche, then you can be one of the people standing out in your niche. Go find the thing that you're nerdy about. For me, it's Indiana history. So I go to YouTube and I type in Indiana history and there's very few YouTube videos. Well, that's an opportunity for me to start creating content that reaches people who are interested in the same thing I'm interested in and can then start building a community. Number three, people that don't listen to podcasts might see it on YouTube, Facebook, or LinkedIn. For The Chris Spangle Show, I use something called StreamYard. That's what I'm recording on right now. And it it allows me to use a pre-recorded video to blast out to eight different media channels. So for instance, I aired an episode last night that was pre-scheduled and ran through StreamYard that I posted to three Twitter accounts and two Facebook groups and a couple pages. You can add it to YouTube channels. So you can expand your reach to reach a larger group of people. For instance, this video will air on my LinkedIn channel. So it will create an event on LinkedIn that people can then go back and watch that video. So those are people who might not necessarily watch podcasts, listen to podcasts, know your podcast exists, use the Apple Podcast app. They may just be scrolling on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, or whatever, and might see that streaming video and start to engage with your show. Number four, a video promo through TikTok or Reels is more eye-catching than a headliner-style video. So this allows you to communicate the main idea of your show to people that may never listen. There's one podcast that I see on Reels all the time because they're now at the top of my algorithm. I think it's the Concrete Podcast with a K. I can recall that podcast. They're not in my podcast app. I don't listen to their show, but I see their Reels all the time because I liked a couple of their videos and I'm getting the main points from their show without ever downloading it. And at the end of the day, you may say, but I want the downloads. It doesn't matter. Your goal is to communicate ideas, to build community, and through whatever channel you're doing that, it really is important. And it really does help you because you're you're spreading your ideas and you're connecting with people maybe on different platforms than your originating source. Number five, reach podcasts around the globe. You've bought music in iTunes or Apple Podcasts and you see the charts in Spotify and they're connected to your country, but your show may not show up as high in the search rankings around the world. And take a look at this chart from Poland in 2022. 73% of people in Poland listen to podcasts on YouTube. The next amount, 37%, listen on a website. And Spotify is at 21%. Apple Podcast is at 2%. In America, that's usually 75 to 80% of your downloads. So you're reaching across the globe a totally new audience if you're on YouTube and allowing yourself to be searched with keywords. Now let's move on to the cons. Number one is expense. So I'm recording this video on my laptop. It's a MacBook Pro, it's got a good camera, I've got my nice background, uh, and I'm being fairly lazy about it. But in past videos, you'll have seen the fancy DSLR shot going into my ATEM switcher using a teleprompter. That setup cost a lot of money. I just did my taxes and I spent over $8,000 last year on video equipment alone to get the look that I wanted. And 
that's expensive. You may not have that. I'm fortunate to monetize my podcasts, so it allows me to buy new equipment and expand my abilities. Uh, so there is a larger expense when it comes to how you want it to look. So you could use your laptop if it looks good like this, or you could use a DSLR camera if you wanted that depth of field look. You could lose, use a Logitech camera for $120. The range is really variable. So for audio podcasting, the most you're really ever going to need to spend is maybe $1,500. You can get great sounding professional equipment for around $800. If you go to podcastingplatforms.com, check out the toolbox. I've made a ton of suggestions there where you can buy cheap equipment. I've also added video options like my DSLR camera and my setup. Um, but it not only adds expense in terms of equipment, it also adds expense in terms of the time. StreamYard, which I mentioned before, cost me an extra extra $50 a month. If I were doing just an audio podcast, I wouldn't have that expense. I, I would use Zoom, which is only $15 a month, which I also pay for, for uh, other podcasts. It also adds to the expense of editing. If you're hiring an editor to edit your podcast, like I'm doing with this one, I'm hiring somebody to edit this podcast and take out all the mistakes and pauses that I'm making, uh, they have to take more time to work with the video because they're bigger files. It's a little harder to edit audio and make the cuts than it is for audio. So it adds to your overall expense. Now, it also adds to difficulty. That's number two. It is more difficult to work with video. It's more difficult to get your guest to sign up to participate on a, a video. Sometimes people just don't want to get made up and, and sit in front of the camera and talk. They just want to do their podcast and be left alone and not have to like get dressed up. You're already asking them a favor to do your show and now you're asking them to look nice when they work from home. Come on. So there's an added layer of difficulty there. There's also an added layer of difficulty, again, if you're editing your own stuff, then uh, in terms of buying an editor, you can use some free editors, but they're not nearly as good as Adobe Premiere, which is what I work in. Uh, and an Adobe suite is going to cost you $50 a month as opposed to maybe free for Microsoft Movie Maker, or I think DaVinci may be free. Um, you know, for audio, you can use Audacity to edit in. I use Adobe Audition. Again, that's part of that $50 package. So again, your difficulty and your expenses increase, which means number three, the biggest reason not to do video is time. It just takes more time. It takes more time to set up a video that looks good. It took me time to buy all of these books to make this background. It took me time to build the bookshelves and to think through how I wanted it to look. It took me time to set up all of the equipment to make it look right. You know why I'm recording on my laptop today? Because my equipment is broken down because I'm using it for shoots elsewhere and it just takes so long to set up the teleprompter and the camera and get the settings back correct the way that I want them to look and then to set up the lights and to set up the LEDs. It just takes time to make it look a certain way. It takes time to edit that video. With more distribution points, it takes more time, right? So if you're putting this video, if you're just uploading an audio podcast, I go into Megaphone, I upload a podcast and I'm done, right? But if I'm uploading a video, I'm uploading it to Facebook, to YouTube, to LinkedIn, to Instagram, to Reels to my website plus the audio side, right? So the distribution takes you more time. So you really have to weigh, is it worth it? I work with clients who don't do video. They just do audio. They don't care about the promotional side. They're using other means to promote their podcast through social media, not using video. Uh, and they're doing fine. And then there are other people, and, and their main reason again is that they do a lot of interviews. They don't have a lot of time. They don't want to spend the extra money in having me edit the video. They don't have time. They don't have money, and they don't want the difficulty. That's totally okay. You know, you're you're going to have some trade offs. You get to save that time and save that expense, but you may not have nearly as much exposure, right? So. It really matters how you want to do it. But if you're trying to think this through 
and you want to hire me to figure it out, then you can go over to leadersandlegends.net, book a consulting call with me, and I'll help you make the decision. Do you want to do audio, video? If you're doing audio now and you want to upgrade your uh, system, then reach out to me and I'm happy to work with you. Or you can always go to podcastingandplatforms.com. Send me a message, chris at podcastingandplatforms.com. And I'm always happy to respond there. So thank you for watching Podcasting and Platforms. And I hope you found this informative and helpful.